Welcome to part one of Why Intelligent Design Fails as a Science. Those who advocate for intelligent design, for example, the Discovery Institute, claim that their brand of creationism is, in fact, scientific. There are many reasons that intelligent design is not scientific, and my goal in this video is to demonstrate just one of those reasons for you. I will leave the other reasons for the topics of future videos in this series. The title of part one is Explaining Everything and Nothing all at once. This is an accurate portrayal of the explanatory power of intelligent design, and I will do my best to outline exactly what this means. In order to do so, it is necessary to have a basic understanding of what a scientific theory is and how they're used. Evolution is a theory. So is gravity, particle theory, the germ theory of disease, plate tectonics, and the like. In science, a theory is a set of explanations that unites hundreds or even thousands of facts to best explain how the natural world works. As new evidence is found, a theory must change to suit the evidence or be discarded. It's one of the greatest strengths of science that the explanations must suit the facts, and therefore must change if new evidence challenges a theory. A scientific theory can be considered proven when any new facts that are found support the theory and add weight to its explanatory power. This is the case with evolution. To date, not one piece of serious scientific evidence has been found that contradicts the theory. It remains the best explanation for the state of life on Earth. The theory of evolution was built up over 150 years of research and was built from the ground up, meaning that the evidence came first and the idea of evolution was proposed to explain that evidence, was then supported by a great deal of new evidence throughout the next several decades and has since become the foundation by which all of modern biology is understood and explained. A scientific theory can also be falsified or proven wrong. Many creationists will claim that evolution is dogmatic, like religion, and can't be proven wrong because the theory will just change to suit the new evidence anyway. That's not the case at all. If new evidence were found that didn't fit the theory, the theory would have to be discarded. For example, if anyone ever found a fossilized rabbit in geological strata dating back to the Cambrian period, the evolution would be unceremoniously defeated and destroyed. If a theory cannot be falsified, it's not really a theory at all. A theory's explanatory power is directly tied to the state of the natural world as it exists in reality. Change any part of that reality, and the theory will be rendered useless. For example, if theoretical physicists ever find the long sought after theory of everything that they've been looking for, it's going to explain the current state of the universe beautifully. But change one part of that universe, for example, that there are five dimensions instead of four, or 12 instead of the 11 that one hypothesis proposes, and the theory of everything will no longer work. A theory can explain the current state of being, but it cannot explain every state of being. This is where intelligent design fails as a scientific theory and therefore isn't scientific at all. A scientific theory must be able to make a prediction about the natural world, often in the form of an if-then statement. For example, if evolution is true, then we would expect to find a nested hierarchy of genetic similarities between creatures that are progressively more and more similar to each other. When tested, this is indeed what we find. I think the most striking example of this is demonstrated by this tree of life uh, created at the University of Texas. One would have to print it on 56 inch poster paper to read all the species names that surround the tree, but there's over a thousand species represented in the hierarchy, each sharing a degree of genetic similarity to each other that increases as they become more related. Indeed, humans and chimpanzees fall right next to each other on this tree, independently confirming yet again that they are our closest living relatives. We can also do the same thing with intelligent design in order to demonstrate that it's not scientific in nature. An if-then statement about the natural world based on ID might go like this. If intelligent design is true, 
then we would expect to find a nested hierarchy of genetic similarities between creatures that are progressively more and more similar to each other. And this is indeed what we find, as outlined above. And an ID advocate would explain the evidence by saying something along the lines of, the designer used the same materials to design all life, so of course we would expect to find similarities in a nested hierarchy. Okay, fair enough. But now let's change the state of the natural world, just for the sake of argument. If intelligent design is true, then we would expect to find no genetic similarities between creatures whatsoever. Every creature should be completely distinct and unique in genetic terms. If we looked at nature and found this to be true, intelligent design still works as the answer. Evolution could not explain the state of being, and this would be strong evidence to suggest that evolution were false. Indeed, no matter how we change the state of being in the natural world, ID continues to work as an explanation. If all creatures share genetic similarities except for humans, ID could explain that as, that's how the designer designed it. If all animals are found to be made out of clay, that's how the designer designed it. If there were no evolutionary history at all, and all creatures sprung into existence last Tuesday, that's how the designer designed it. Descent with modification, that's how the designer designed it. No descent with modification, that's how the designer designed it. Big Bang, that's how the designer designed it. No Big Bang, that's how the designer designed it. Gravity, well, that's how the designer designed it. No gravity, that's just how the designer designed it. Do you see a pattern developing here? Any explanation that can simultaneously explain two distinctly opposite states of being is not an explanation for anything at all. Period. ID advocates will cry foul to this idea, claiming instead that there's evidence to support ID within the natural state of being we find in the world. That's not true. Never mind the fact that the Discovery Institute explicitly states they believe the universe is the work of the God in the Bible. You can't start from an assumption in science. It's not allowed. Never mind the fact that they do no research, make no if-then hypotheses to test their theory of intelligent design. Never mind the fact that they publish no papers, and instead base what they call evidence solely on attempting to prove evolution is incorrect. That's not how science works, by the way. No theory stands purely because another is found to be wrong. If that were the case, all evolutionary biologists would do is attempt to prove ID incorrect. Instead, they work on studying the natural world and adding to the knowledge of humanity. Now, if you disagree, and you wish to perpetuate Stone Age myths behind a mask of science in order to confound a generation of students and help yourself justify your religious ideals, there's one place that, if I believed in it, I would suggest that you go. Thanks for watching. Spread the word.